Hi, I'm Tony Poulos at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. Today I have a very esteemed panel of people that are going to help me understand the adoption of ORAN or Open RAN and its benefits. Gentlemen, welcome. Let me introduce you first. Sandeep Sharma, who is the Vice President and Global Head of Portfolio 5G and ORAN Networks at Tech Mahindra. Thank you for being here. Next, we have Wei Yang Tao, who is the General Manager, Ecosystem Development Organization, Network and Edge Solutions Group at Intel Corporation. You must be very important with such a long title, Wei Yang, I'm sure. And last but certainly not least, we have Hakrit Singh, who is the CEO of the Send Digital Solutions Limited. Gentlemen, thanks for being here, and thanks for putting up with my very long introduction, but let's get right onto the subject. So Sandeep, let me start with you, if I can. We're seeing strong momentum and progress with Carrier's adoption of Open RAN. And it's taken a while to get there, I know. But what are the key takeaways and what are the next steps to continue enabling service providers to get this ecosystem running overall? Yeah, right. You're right, Tony. ORAN is now shaping up well, really well. And you know that ORAN is actually providing an ecosystem to the operators or to the carriers who deploy a flexible solution the way they want to be. It's an inevitable change that will changing, that will change or is changing the transforming the RAN industry as a whole. We as a tech man are involved in almost all the large scale deployments in Open RAN, including small scale trial as well, and the POCs are the new age solutions around it. At the same time, when we evolved ourselves as a system integrator in this domain, we realized there are a set of pillars or learnings that can be leveraged or that can be replicated for a successful ORAN journey. And few of them includes uh, importance of interoperability. You need to make sure the system, different systems components interop. At the same time, you need to look at uh, the lab ecosystem play so that you can create a pre-integrated, pre-production sort of in a stack ready for the operators. At the same time, importance of automation as well, because you are bringing layers of you know, AI and cloudification virtualization, making it work for customers, you need to put a lot of automation around it. And finally, uh, the importance of security. Since you are moving towards softwareization, virtualization, open interface, you need to make the networks more and more secure, having additional layer of security from the IT world and telco world together. That's how I summarize it. Wow, that was a good summary though. Wei Yang, I'm coming to you now. How do you see the progression of ORAN and how is Intel helping accelerate ORAN adoption? Because a lot of people are wondering where Intel fits in this. All right, all right, of course, yeah. Hey, so um, we see tremendous yeah, progress year by year. This is very encouraging, right? Um, just last year, saw um, different uh, announcements happening. AT&T with Ericsson's, um, Airtelus with Samsung and so on, right? We can that few more to mention, but Intel being the forefront of VRAN for over a decade and we've been in networking business for more than two decades as well and thanks to all the key learning coming out from network function virtualization this not industrial knowledge accumulation helped us to win the trust from the partners that all the partners is leaning in trusting the technology that evolved from network function virtualization into the VRAN and VRAN by far is the most open RAN VRAN by far is the most complex decouplings that they uh, require to go and address. So what Intel is doing, right? Intel is doing a couple of things, right? First, we're providing a, a fundamental-based VRAN platform that could help the partners to protect the investment. Therefore, they started right at the beginning with the opportunity to add on more capability that built into the platform itself is just progressively activated. Let's put it that way in the, in the layman terms. Um, we're also working with the uh, ecosystem partners to make sure that they consume the additional capability that we keep on adding on to make it perfect, right? Uh, we have VRAM boosts that come with the fourth generation say, a Xeon scalable processor that we announced say, uh, um, last year, um, able to deliver to the TCO expectation. And now this year itself, we demonstrate how things can go one step further by using a VRAM de AI development kits to activate the AI features and AI adoption will need to go by phases. So this is not a simple task, but thanks to all the partner trust, right, we've been able to continuously help our partner to develop the solution on track, at the same time helping the telco to protect the TCO, that desired TCO. Akrit, I'm very interested firstly to find out a little bit more about your company, Ascend Digital Solutions. Let me know about that first. So Tony, Ascend Digital Solutions is a company which is based in uh, Ghana. Uh, we are actually looking at uh, doing large scale digital transformations. So over the last few years, uh, we have taken up a lot of uh, digital infrastructure and right from the backbone uh, infrastructure, fiber, the data centers, the wireless infrastructure, 
And we're transforming the entire paradigm to bring more and more digital connectivity to reduce digital divide and increase financial inclusion. So our mission is to actually create ubiquitous, seamless uh, networks to provide universal access broadband. Well, this question is aimed for you then. The rate of new technology development and innovation has significantly increased over the last few years. Can you shed some light on how Open RAN plays a crucial role in driving digital connectivity for places like, say, Africa and even uh, India and Asia? Where, how is it happening? How is it rolling out? So I think te technology and the markets are usually separate, okay? So I won't say like technology brings the right level of transformation and the country's agenda for digital, okay? But what technology does, it actually accelerates the space of that particular digital transformation. But when we look at open RAN and the traditional RAN, we are going through the whole process of uh, launching an open RAN, open RAN network, uh, first in Africa. There are a lot of trials going on, but we are really looking at something that comes out, comes out this year. The challenges that we are seeing in the traditional RAN vendors and the open RAN vendors, the open RAN ecosystem is still small, you know, and it is also fragmented into how the different components are built up. So what is happening is that if, if I am a module A, I put a lot of my R&D money in module A, and if I get an order, I'm not able to leverage the scale because scale does not exist, okay? So when you actually pack up all the modules, the price of open RAN is higher, okay? But the question comes in for us, when you look into the technology to bring the level of innovation that is needed to drive that level of connectivity to the edge, to bring that open innovation ecosystem that actually creates that hyperscale infrastructure, that's where open RAN differentiates itself with the traditional RAN. Other key thing that we're looking at is the speed of bringing speed and acceleration of the digital transformation, okay? Now, if you take a traditional RAN ecosystem and look into the different processes uh, to actually go in terms of zero touch provisioning, full automation, okay, configuration of the infrastructure, we said that we look at Open RAN that they have done that. You know, there is a lot of possibility to bring the infrastructure faster in time and deliver on demand scalability that is needed as part of the cloud and virtualized infrastructure. So that one of one key component of having a technology which is cloud native and bringing that level of automation gives us an advantage or let's say open RAN operators an advantage to go faster as compared to the traditional RAN. Very well explained. For somebody like me, I sometimes grasp with all the layers that are involved with open RAN rollouts. And I think that was very well put. But I'm gonna come back to you at the moment, Tony, about new networks. New networks are also getting more complex, right? Uh, what role do you see AI taking in furthering network transformation? Uh, I, we have to talk about AI because that's the subject that's been hitting us here constantly. But what role do you see AI, AI taking in furthering network transformation journey by addressing things like automation, manageability, and of course, that awful word, sustainability, yeah. that's coming up all, every day now? Yeah, honestly speaking, the values that Oren is bringing in, in terms of virtualization and having a common data lake across the different layers of network functions, brings a lot of you know applicability of AI. Now you need not to worry about someone else looking into multiple domains. You can have your AI engines running, you can take observability end to end across right from hardware infrastructure layer to the network functions, functions layer and bringing a meaningful observability out of it so that network can take a meaningful decisions. At the same time, there are two versions of AI, it's like traditional AI and the Gen AI. And you can use Gen AI for more operational efficiencies as well, taking all the you know, customer complaints and all, faster resolution, all those things can be better handled. And most important thing, the sustainability part of it. Sustainability is, is not new, it was there in the traditional network. So there was a need for that, and it will remain as, as long as we are operating on the natural resources. But if you look at the AI part of it, AI once helps you in dating, taking a meaningful decisions out of the, how the networks are operating, where the power consumption is happening on a higher level, where you can optimize it. AI brings a lot of flexibility. Having a software virtualization done with open RAN, with open interfaces, you can bring different models and achieve efficiencies out of it in terms of lower power consumption or optimized power consumption across the network. I can see Wei Yang going, oh, oh, it's also important for us. He wants to let us know. Go ahead. Yeah, you know, just power on top there. Absolutely right. Uh, AI is um, a topic that every single meeting in this trip. Yeah. 
towards the end of the meeting, we'll ask, what's your AI strategy? Um, well, if I put AI into ORAN context, right, very specifically, or VRAN context, right, it, it will be a progressive a, um, um, uh, um, uh, improvement, right? let's put it that way. So let's go by um, three layer, right? I talked about the Intel VRAN platform early on. Within the platform itself, it do come along with the AI capability that waiting to unlock. It's the same TCO. Intel FlexRAN software, reference software, is the glue that so far, by far, in the marketplace, most of the ecosystem partner will refer to. So it's a glue to help the ecosystem to integrate between the upper layer with the platform itself. And within the FlexRAN software, now we are bringing the VRAN AI development kits on top of it, and that helps to unlock the capability. I'll, I'll throw three, three examples out. The energy saving, right? Helping to able to analyze the real time, say a power, say a usage, and collect all those metrics and able to analyze the metrics and provide the best recommendation to put the CPU call into either stage and wake it up. Um, AT&T showcased in the booth that a, um, with 16, just 16, 16.6% of the power saving, it translates to 4.2 million of the saving, right? Just ex ba basic things, calculation, right? Energy, that's one. Um, second part of it, the uh, beam management, right? Um, by implementing AI, it could help to manage the beam been forming beam management in a more effective way and can be user defined as well. And then a lot, the, the, third, the third one uh, that we showcase is the uh, resources management through the slicing. But the key point here is the platform and the software will provide the capability. We would like to help together with the, within the ecosystem how the telco with the data set that are coming through the telco is the most important thing. The data set will decide how accurate and how effective it is to help the telco to gain the benefit out from it. So therefore, we, we are providing the pre-trained model based on FlexRAN software and the VRAN kits, uh, VRAN AI kits, with the data that come in, data set coming in with Telco to help to pre-train the model. The more model we pre-train, the better it is, and it benefit all the ecosystem partners to use it. You don't need to repeat again. You just take whatever we have, right? It helps the ecosystem partner to grow. Hakrit, how is AI going to affect your operations? I think for AI, what we're looking at largely from a sustainable perspective, our goal is zero bit, zero watt. So what it means is that if there is no traffic on the on the on the network, I don't want to we don't want to power it up because see the challenge what we are seeing in Oran is there is a lot of decoupling of interfaces and opportunity to bring cost hardware, okay, but it is also increasing the what we have seen so far the power consumption in the data centers because the amount of uh, CUs that you need to deliver the similar line of capacity and the amount of interface that you need from the fiber to the backhaul is huge. So it has, <clears throat> so from a perspective of power consumption, okay, it is a bit higher, okay. But I think overall from an AI perspective, what we really want is, as, as Max said is, we need to have the models which are trained because we want something which is plug-in. We want something that something comes up and says, guys, here it is and we will have a 30% power saving we don't have to wait for six months, one year to have those trained models. You might have a localization in facts, like you know how much of you know the the sites are running on the electricity, how much of sites are running on the solar, and how the uh, how the local operation is working. But those trained models, if they come pre uh, pre pre trained, then we actually save a lot of time to get that efficiency, gain that efficiency. Makes a lot of sense. In summary, I'm going to ask you one question, and I want all of you to give me a nice concise answer on this one. From an ORAN perspective, how do you envisage the network evolving in the future? How uh, you do that in, in a short time, I don't know, but have uh, a go. So network's going to be more and more autonomous day by day. As you evolve further, AI will play a more important role and the systems will be native AI driven. We need not to create an additional layer of AI. And how fast we can do, how better we can do is as we evolve in the industry, we all will uh, see it. But that's how I see it is happening with the RIC evolution happening, with the accepts and RFs coming in, evolution ultimately to 6G. AI is going to drive how things should happen. Yes, I knew someone was going to say 6G and it had to be you. Well done, yeah. Sam. Well, what do you think? Um, well, a um, few things, right? Um, we, we were going to see more innovation coming up, right, within a, the edge computing and 5G co converge together, become a, a, a bigger market, right? Partner will come in and collaborate. Um, we will see the interfaces will get defined better and better, right? Uh, interoperability will getting like better and better as well. 
um, the partnership among the ecosystem will be better as well because they are all those key learning will get shared across the ecosystem. You encourage, we all encourage, right? The more ecosystem to come and participate in this growth, this business growth itself is very healthy, right? And of course, um, AI will come in in a progressive way, right? And any key learning will help the other say, networks, networks function as well. Um, so to simply put, the uh, ORANs going to be um, pretty positive in the future. Yeah. The way I look at it, yeah. So we make progress, and um, the only see the only things that we see is upside right now. Yeah, yeah. That's good to hear. Harkred, what's your opinion of the future I network? Think we want ORAN to be embraced with a larger ecosystem, the likes of Ericsson, Nokia's. Really, they need to actually embrace it because so far they've been resisting the whole thing. You know, it has been driven by new age. Uh, operators, likes of Rakuten Mobile, which has done an excellent work on bringing ORAN live. Okay? But these other big vendors need to embrace so that the cost of ownership and the TCO gets lower. Okay? From an innovation perspective, it's the best technology any telecom operators will have. And if you see from what One and One has done with about 500 of edge data centers and stuff, they're opening the interfaces and bringing the content closer to the user. So today, if I have to stream a, like a you know, very high quality video, I don't need to cash from the dollar center. I can do a local stuff. You know, I can break out there. The, the user plane doesn't need to go back into my code. Okay? So that's the advantage of bringing us, as Max said and Sandeep is saying, is that the innovation power of Open RAN is humongous to transform any telecom operations or when it will bring the benefits of a local content and distribution of mobile edge computing to the users. Gentlemen, thank you so much. I now think that ORAN has a big future. You've convinced me. Thanks very much, very much for, for your help, Sandeep, uh, Wei Yang, and Harkrit. Thanks for being with me thanks, today. Thanks, thanks, Tony. Thank you. Thanks, Ronnie.